Welcome back to the Emergency Power Podcast. You've made it through the first half of the finale, so draw your guns, swords, hammers, magic focuses, and grenades, and fight Archduke Pathon with us. The second-hand crew has crash-landed on the Cylans God Scythe warship and broken their way inside. Now, they stare down ten foot soldiers while Pathon himself stares down condescendingly from a massive monitor. Can Scrip, Pawns, 5e, and Swarkus stay alive and find their compatriots while under the Archduke's gaze? Let's find out. So here's how this combat's gonna go. Uh, in order to keep it from being slowed down by 10 different enemies firing at you individually, each group that you see on the map is two of them. When you cut through one's gotcha. health, they'll have one less attack and it'll just be one guy. Gotcha, okay. okay. Yeah, because I only see five guys on and the map. The, uh, and the squares are five feet, right? Exactly. Okay. All right, so. It seems that first is in our 5e, always swinging for the fences on initiative. Yep. yep. Uh, let's see. Um, I'll shoot a look to my right and, and at Griff and say, you go right, I'll go left. Uh, and I'm going to trick attack the duo of guards here. Okay. Down at the south. Yep. A sense motive of 31. Yeah, that'll do it. Okay. Moving into position. And I'm just going to whack him with my baton. Okay. Go ahead. Give me a attack roll. you got to be kidding me. The three natural ones? Is it ones? a one? Yes. No way. What Dude. did you do to RNG? Jesus. I, your chances of that know. are insane. You, you're assaulting Triune right now. I mean, right. obviously you're Something's being punished. Glitching. Uh, confirm or deny failure with a 10. A 10. Oh, no. no. 10, bro. You confirm your failure. Pathon <laughs> laughs. Yikes. Okay, let me just look through these cards and see how horrible they are. <laughs> yes, yes, I think this one, while it doesn't make sense for the name of the card, it will still make sense. It's called Jam a Finger. You take negative two penalty <laughs> to attacks and skill checks using your hands for 1d4 rounds. Oh, Ooh. stop using man. your hands, 5 e. <laughs> Kick him! <laughs> okay, right, let's give me that D4. Ah, uh, it is one round. <laughs> Excellent. Could have been worse. It could have been way worse. <sighs> Guys, okay. I'm really, really sorry about this. Uh, we should get a plus <laughs> one bonus on attacks, though, right? Uh, yes. Nice. Yeah, that happened shortly before this. Absolutely. You're going to get this round, you'll get a plus one, and then after Perfect. that, it'll be on. Okay. Okay, Scriff, you're up. All right, Scriff is going to charge forward at this guy right in front. Uh, I'm assuming that these computer monitors are some kind of difficult terrain. Yeah. And I'm going to chomp with my power armor. Okay. That's a 17 against KAC. That hits. Go ahead, roll damage. You're going to take 10 piercing damage. Okay, you run up to these two guys. They pull up their guns to shoot you, and you just go in and you chomp one completely to death. Just doof, doof, doof. And he falls over, and the other one's like, holy crap! When he gets a chance, he's definitely going to try to shoot you or something. <laughs> but uh, is that your turn? That's my turn. Okay, there's a group of Silent soldiers up to the north. They saw you literally eat one of their friends to death. <laughs> wow. <laughs> So they're both going to take shots on you. One of them misses and one of them crit fails. And I have to confirm whether or not it crit fails. Oh, that's a tough confirm, too. My it AC is a is pretty very high. tough confirm. Yeah. And Actually makes AC really that good. That is a confirmed failure. We have nice. two of these and it's the first round. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Okay. I'm here for it. 
reroll attack against your nearest ally if that attack could normally target that ally. Yes! <laughs> so, Wait, don't I get to pick them from out of two? Uh, you do, but one wouldn't actually do anything for you. Ah. Uh. So, the one that actually can do something. He steps back, trips on a wire, and is going to accidentally shoot at his boy. Oh, nice. Well, he's just as bad at shooting his boy as he was at you, so oh, he misses wildly. All right, he <laughs> stumbles back, bumps his butt up against the computer. Moving on to the next group. From downtown, they're going to shoot at NR5E, but you have some cover, so they're going to fire it in negative two because there's a computer oh. monitor in the way. I like it. That is a against KAC, a 14 and an 18. 14, no, 18, yes. Okay, and you take six damage. An 18 from that one against shot. KAC? Or Correct. EAC? KAC. But did you already, he, he you said, already applied the K. cover? Oh, you're he, right. He, he, applied the, he applied the cover as no, a penalty to no, their shot. I, messed I, thought. Up. I, I didn't actually apply it. All right. Oh, okay, then neither will hit. Very good. Okay, you avoid that six damage. My bad. I like how I said a thing and then forgot instantaneously. Yeah. I right. do that all the time. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, one more group of Silent. They're just they're in a row here and they're just trying to kill you guys. Hmm. Wow, they don't have great shots on anyone. So they're gonna shoot at five E's nearby. Ish. You know. Ish. I'm a big shiny target. You are. Okay. Even with some cover, one of those is gonna hit. It's a 14 and 23 with the minus yeah, two. Yeah, 20, 23 will definitely get in there. Okay, so now time for damage, and again, that is a six. So it's as if I just had moved on to the next character. Pawns, you are up. All right, so I am gonna move forwards, kind of behind Scriff here, and I'm okay. gonna throw a frag grenade, kind of in the Ooh. middle of these two guys, the the one directly in front of me and the one to the north of him. Okay. And they're both within range of that frag grenade. <laughs> okay, go so. ahead. I think all you have to do is beat like a five or something super easy to hit the square. 13. That'll do it. Roll me some damage, please. As all I right. Roll some saves. It, it says seven P? I don't know what the P is. Piercing. P is piercing. Piercing. All right, seven then. They both fail. Yes. I all right. The, oh, yeah, oh. sorry. Both groups fail. Uh-huh. Do they okay. take double damage from grenades because it's hitting both of them individually? Mm, I'm stretching here. You are. <laughs> We're just going to cut through the points here. Um, the one in front of you looks absolutely miserable now. You just Good. got shards in the back, and one of the guys well, uh, to the other side looks pretty bad off. All right, and okay. I'll fly five feet higher. Okay. That'll be it. Go up five feet. <laughs> so you can maybe shoot over Scriff. Who's yeah. giant now? <laughs> okay, Swark is time. There's, this is very difficult because there's so many big things in the way and it's a tight squeeze. Yeah. There's a big mouse in the way. Yeah, he's going to have to use a double move to get through you because he can't stop on your square. So he's just going to double move right next to that. Okay, that's his turn. Moving on. Soldiers right in front of Griff. Oh my gosh, there's nowhere he can go. If he five foot steps, he's still in the range of people. That's right. All yeah, right. Okay, I'm going to have him roll acrobatics as he tries to climb up on the desk so he can try to get out of range. Nice. Okay, he does manage to do that. He's going to pull up his gun, and he's going to shoot at the one who killed his friend. That's you, Scriff. Uh, that is a 20 to hit KAC. Does it hit, Johnny? Does Swarkus have reach? I was going to get into that after you told me, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, it's important because if Swarkus hits, then I'm okay. That's fair enough. Okay, so yes, yeah, Swarkus does have reach with his big ol' hammer. And that is a 27 to oh. hit with his hammer. <laughs> so that guy jumped up on there. He pulls his gun up on Scriff. Swarkus does like a baseball bat swing, and this guy splatters across the room. I was just playing Super Smash Brothers not too long ago, and so I just imagine it's like when Donkey Kong gets a big bunch. Oh, yeah. 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 Except there's no body to fly off screen. It's just. <laughs> I'll, I'll clean that up later. Oh, don't bother. <laughs> okay. We're not coming back. He's a yet. Jackson Pollock now, kids. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Round two, 5e, you are up. You splattered an entire group, and some of them uh, look bad. 
boy. All right. Well, let's see if we can do better this round. I Holy believe balls. in 5e. How many more natural ones can an RNG <laughs> bot give me tonight? Uh, I'm going to trick attack again. Okay. 28. 28 will do it. All right. I'll stick with the baton. It's lower damage, but it's a better attack roll. Okay. Remember, you have negative two on your attack with that. Yep. That is going to be a 15, actually a 16 with the penalty. Okay. That hits. All right. Um, but, 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 Give me that damage. trick damage. Uh, I know. It's the best thing ever. <laughs> and yours just went up recently, didn't it? Yeah. I mean, if you'll remember last time, that's 3d8 damage every time oh, I drop that. So, so uh, that is damage? 26 bludgeoning My damage gosh. to one of those bras. Okay, you pull back this thing, and with the rapidity only a machine could have, you just go, bleep, 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 and you beat both of them to death. Swork is talking to him and he gives you like that, yeah, kind of look. <laughs> Dang, go on. And I'm just going to peer around the computer terminal down at the other guy. <laughs> well, hello. Or okay. other set of guys, I guess I should say. Yeah, um, just for fun, go ahead and give me like an intimidation roll. Sure, yeah, that's great. <laughs> Intimidate 19. <laughs> yeah, you see they take a step back after, like, Swork has splattered a guy and you just beat these two to death. They appear a little intimidated. They okay. should really rethink their life choices. <laughs> <laughs> it might be a bit late. All right, script of tail. All right, this is my full, this would be my full movement, so I think okay. because one of these squares is difficult terrain, I might have to do an acrobatics, maybe? Yeah, go ahead. I'm, I'm a big just body. Like, if you do it well, you just, like, stomp on the desk and break it down to your level. Okay, that's going to be a 19. Yeah, that'll do it. Okay, and <laughs> that then that desk uh, is just crank. Yeah, I just crunch it down as I try Heck to. Yeah. I try to climb up on it, but then it just collapses <laughs> under my weight. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're too used to climbing on things for being a small guy. Now yeah. you just crush them. And then I'm gonna go for another chomp on this new guy. Okay, that's gonna be an 11 KAC. 11 KAC does not hit. Nah, I didn't think so. That's my turn. Okay, uh, the guys right in front of you are not happy about the situation. They take a step back and they're going to just open fire on you. That is a 16 and a 19. Nothing. <laughs> just You just bing, cross your arms in front of you and just <laughs> bounce off. Oh my gosh, Griff is so cool now. All right, <laughs> the troopers over in the south are going to move around, try to get some cover. They're going to take a shot on Swarkus Gore, each of them. They can do that without a bonus, and it's not anywhere near that robot. Okay. Uh, oof. Man, these rolls. Okay, one's an eight, one's a natural one, but they do manage to confirm it, so they just miss. Good, good. Okay. Well, good for them, but not for us. <laughs> I just, I'm feeling sympathy for anybody who rolls natural ones right now. That's all. Mm -hmm. That's fair. That's fair. Okay. Uh, the last group of these guys is going to fire on Scriff, who's tall enough that they'll probably not have to take any negatives. I can't believe this. Another natural one? <laughs> I'm as bad as Richard. <laughs> we just ran into stormtroopers after we boarded this ship. <laughs> you did. And, like, there's... It's really hard for them to confirm on you. So let's see what the deck says. Okay, so either they move two steps down the Constitution Poison Track for 1d4 minutes, or re-roll the attack against an ally again. Which would you like? I like re-rolling against allies, just because yeah. it <laughs> speeds up the, the combat, so it. do that. And that definitely hits. Yes! Right. That's the best roll I've had with these guys. Good. Yeah, their oh guns are just malfunctioning all over the okay. place. Yeah, they're firing at this giant robo mouse, and one takes a step back as the other takes a step forward, and he blows that guy's head off. Uh, <laughs> the lack of coordination. He left in damage. Been there. <laughs> oh they my gave gosh. guns to the IT guys. They shouldn't have done that. <laughs> all right, Pons, you're up. These people are not looking good. I'll move forward. Kind of... Yes, next oh, to the giant man. lizard here. And then <laughs> the guys to the north and uh, 
west of me. I'll throw it right in between them. Okay, you got it. Give me that roll. Oh, oh no. That was a three. That is a three, ladies and gentlemen. That is How a is that three. How is that even possible? Uh, okay. It's because you're not proficient with grenades, so no. you took a minus four. All right. Um, Pons, <laughs> roll a 1d4 for me, please. Oh, four. Okay, so that actually is not terrible for you. That means it's going to fly to the west, which is actually the direction oh, okay. of one of the soldiers. Nice. For the throw, to see how far it goes, give me an athletics check. Let's see here. Athletics? Ah. Uh, <laughs> that was a one. Okay. Because of that, one of those soldier groups is going to have to save, but so do both you and Swarkus. Oh. So go ahead, roll damage, and we'll get some reflex saves going. Uh, I was 10 damage that time. Oof. Okay. What's your reflex save, Coop? At 20 total. 20 total? Okay. Yeah. Everyone is going to take half damage. The silent soldiers nat 20 did. The first and only time they'll ever have that. All right. That was more harm than good, but that's okay. All right. That soldier over there looks bad. Real bad. Work is time. <laughs> I mean, quite literally in his case, hammer time. Moves all the way down to the silent soldier that just got grenaded. He kind of gives pawns like, what? Why did you do that kind of look? And then he takes a big "Ah." swing with his hammer. That's a 29 to hit. And he's going to do all kinds of damage. I don't even need to roll, but it's hilarious if I do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which he splatters again. This time he comes over the computers and smashes straight down. And it just all over the ground as this other group goes down as well. Excellent. Okay, so we got one group who's still looking good. One group who's got one dead guy. And as we get to the top of round three, from the monitor, you hear, (laughs) Most wonderful! I am not disappointed in your strength. He he looks at Pons for a second. Mostly. (laughs) Thumbs up to the monitor. Yeah! Invigorated, in fact, (laughs) by all of this. As if released from shackles. And I shall engage you in combat, personally. As he says that, the lights of every screen in the room begin to dim, save the main panel. On the massive monitor, the Archduke leans forward as if pressing his face into the screen and purple tendrils begin to invade the pixels. A hand begins to push through the screen and begins to grasp at the corners as if it's made of rubber. And it begins to drag a head and torso through this screen. That's awesome. A fractured facsimile of the person you just saw bathed in purple electricity claws its way into the room and it pulls itself about halfway through as it lets loose this distorted yell. Oh, snap. Why is it huge? Oh my gosh. That's that's more than huge. That is arguably gargantuan. It takes up like the entire map right now. That's like a freaking, that's that's an eight by eight at least. That is a 12 by 12, ladies and gentlemen. I thought you said personally. This doesn't seem like in person to me. Your tricks cannot frighten me. This thing roars at you as it pulls itself through. Uh, Scriff, go ahead, give me athletics check. I don't wanna. 12. 12. Ooh. I'm just gonna, uh, this dude is too big, so I can't move your token. If you please move yourself all the way down right next to Pons, as you get shoved back by this giant creature pulling itself out. What, and what about the guy that was next to you? Yeah. What guy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah the... No, oh. no, what guy? <laughs> because as this thing comes through, a hand just slams down in the area and that dude splatters just like a Swark of hit it. Oh my god. And now we begin the real combat. Oh, and now begins the killing. Followed by Light Salad. 
So as you get pushed out, also just real quick, give me a fortitude save, please. That's going to be a 16. As you get pushed back, you notice this swirling, coalescing cloud of broken glass shards, and you get cut by them as you are too close to this thing. And you are going to take five damage. What? So this thing has an aura. If you move within a certain radius, which is just within five feet of the head and torso area, no. you're going to get hit by flying shards of glass. Oh, fantastic. All right. In our 5e, top of round three, you're up. 5e would like to analyze the situation because he feels that there is some sort of computer shenanigans going on here. Okay. Um, So he's going to start off with a computer's check to see if he can identify how this effect is being generated and if there's a a way to backdoor damage to this thing other than attacking it head on. Okay. Yeah, go ahead and give me a round. Only a 14, so probably not going to glean too much information from that. Yeah, not a whole lot. Uh, You know there's a bunch of computers around you you can mess with, but aside from that, you've never seen anything like this ridiculousness before. Well, then I guess I will go with the direct approach, and uh, I'm going to trick attack with my skip shot, because that's the gun I have out. All right. Trick attack's not going to work, but that is a 16 to hit. 16 still hits. This thing is as big as a barn. All right, Scriff, you're up. Uh, I also want to look at what the F I'm looking at. <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, computers or engineering? I'd give computers. 22. Oh, way better. 22. Yeah, from what you can tell here, you do, you don't know what the Archduke is doing exactly, but it seems to have created, like, an avatar out of the technology of this monitor, and it's just the whole thing is forming into a body. So it's, it's definitely magic and technology together. It's magic and technology. Yeah. Is this something that I could, like, hack to... to try and disable you could try okay i don't know maybe maybe not i i would like to try and hack it away you're gonna do a hack attack i'm gonna do a hack attack yeah okay you can make computers roll and uh if if there's any kind of countermeasures here i have i do have hack directory uh but that's a 17 yeah what was the countermeasure thing again so hack directory when if I if I hack a system and fail the check, I immediately become aware of any countermeasures, and I can pick one of them, attempt another computer's check to try and prevent that one from triggering if it would have triggered on my uh, hack attempt. Okay, that's going to be very handy because as you try to hack into this thing, you run into a countermeasure that essentially would have tried to use your own technology to attack back at you. So you have a chance to try to deal with that. Okay. Uh, So I'll make another computer's check to try and disable that and, like, essentially treat as if I had never tried to hack into him. That's a 27 this time. Okay, you have successfully stopped yourself from being horribly maimed. Okay, Uh and now I'm aware of this thing. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. Um... I don't know what kind of action that was, what I can still do, if anything. Yeah, that's that's going to be your main action. You could still move. Um, yeah, I'll just uh, I'll, I'll move off to the side, I guess. Okay. So that I'm not in AOE range of pawns. The Silent soldiers who are in the back that are cowering are um, they're still going to take shots at you. Their, their boss came in, so they're a little reinvigorated and Sorkis is the only one in range so they're going to fire and they're just going to miss horribly because they're amazing <laughs> moving on again pawns you're up all right uh can i sense its thought yeah it okay. is definitely being controlled by Python. okay i don't know if that gives me enough information am i able to actually reach out Wait, to, the, to the mind the comp- of the, the, the thing the hologram has thoughts oh i don't think it's a hologram it's in some way connected to Python. yeah it's not a hologram it is physically there it is just parts of this giant monitor that have come out to murder you but what you're saying is pawn senses thoughts from it yeah correct what? All right, I brain blasted. However, not just any <laughs> sort of one. 
I'm going to use Oleron's mental shell on this one. Oh, Ooh. yes. That's going to increase the DC by four as well as uh, double damage potential oh, here. Oh, my yes. goodness. So go ahead and give me a save, please. Yeah. That is a total of a 20 to save. 17 plus four. So it should be 21. So my save is 21. That means you beat it by one. All right. <laughs> okay, give double damage. Me the massive damage. Thank you for letting me keep my popsicle. <laughs> As you do that, you see a crack form <laughs> across the shell. And it's a nice. pretty sizable crack. All right. And the double damage there is going to be a total of 37. Ooh. Okay. And I'm going to fly away. Run away. No, I can't do that. Oh, no. I'm within range. You're definitely uh, within range. Five foot. <laughs> As you inch out. All right. That's the end of my turn there. All right. So you, you go up on your tiptoes and just step away. Yep, barely inch away. Yeah, okay. Now it is time oh for Archduke Pathon. <laughs> Turn indicator so huge. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's massive. <laughs> it takes up most of the screen. I feel like that should mean that everyone gets to go. <laughs> so you did this big brain thing on it, and it didn't like that very much, so it's going to cast a spell of its own. Interesting. So the spell it casts doesn't actually affect you guys. They pull the arms back, grasp in front of their mind, and do something. Can I try to identify it? Yeah, go ahead. Give me mysticism. 18. With an 18, you can tell that it is some sort of mind-affecting ability, but he cast it on himself. So likely it's something to protect against you guys. Hmm, okay. Uh, that was his turn. He just buffed himself. Now it's time for the Swarkus of Gore. He's going to move in, and he does not care about this poultry damage that's being dealt by an aura. He's going to run in, and he's going to go for the face. Wait. Because that's what Swarkus does, too. There are chickens here? Poultry damage? <laughs> poultry damage. Poultry. Not poultry. Poultry. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> this po okay, so now this aura is, is not a swarm. Minus? This is now a swarm of chickens. <laughs> <laughs> Look what you did, Jeff. Look what you did. Uh, this guy is going to get an attack of opportunity because Swark has moved quite a bit into it. So I mean, roll that. That is a definite hit on Swarkus Gore. Oh, for 19 points of damage. Ooh. He's but a big boy. Th that is the reaction. So now anyone else who moves this turn won't have to deal with that. Hmm. Okay, and then Swarkus is going to come in with a big hammer. And just as he goes to swing on this thing, the thing pulls back and he just barely clips it. So he does hit, but it is like within one. Lance and blow. He still does pretty solid damage. As you see the hammer hit some of the fragments of this computer <laughs> jut out of its chest and fly into the air. And that will be his turn. He is going to take a little bit of damage from this aura, but not enough for him to even care. All right. Top of the order 5e. All right. All of our 5e sensors are on full alert. He's scanning this creature for any sign of a weakness, trying to analyze its attack patterns and see if he can find a way to punch a hole in it. Um, his trick attack check is 23, which I don't does think is not good do enough. It. It's just this big screaming monster. <laughs> yep. Well, he does get a 19 to hit versus KAC, That'll so I'll take hit. what I can get. Another six piercing damage. Six piercing damage. You got it. Moving on. Moving on. Script dovetail. Script's going to try and hack into this thing again. Okay. Give me what you got. Here we go. 31 this time. Ooh. -hoo. Okay, so here's what you're going to be able to do with a 31, because this is controlled by another creature. I'm going to have them essentially try to combat your role. I'm going to just turn off the monitor. <laughs> <laughs> Change the channel, quick! <laughs> what was your Push role? the volume button! I got a 31. A 31, okay. So he's going to roll computers against you. And that is a natural 20. I'm going to spend a popsicle oh. and make him re-roll. 
What? How dare you? I, oh, sorry, let me change the voice. How dare you? Oh, yeah, you like that popsicle, don't you? <laughs> As he licks it seductively. <laughs> it's got no creepy place now. Very well. Use your popsicle. And as you do that, <laughs> it no longer can defeat your role. Yeah. So what's going to happen here is because, again, it's controlled by someone else. You can only do so much. What is your plan? And I'll tell you what happens. Sever the connection, basically. If I can get access to higher level functions and do stuff to him, great. But top priority is just disabling this thing. All right, so you attempt to hack in and disable, and what's going to happen is I'm going to give him some negatives. If you can continue to beat him, then you might be able to sever the connection entirely. As it stands, you are, like, there's these parts of the television that are still connected to its arms. One of its arms is, like, splayed out, and it's got these tethers pulling it. So they start to pull back more, so he's going to have a more difficult time attacking you guys right now. Okay? Okay. Can I do different stuff each time to mess with yeah, them? Yeah, just, just let me know what you're trying to do, and okay. we'll see what happens. Cool. Silent soldiers, they're going to move, and they're going to try to get into a better position, and they're going to shoot at pawns. No. <laughs> Okay, that is a 15 and an 18 KAC. Uh, They tied my KAC and then definitely beat it. So both of those hit you. That is 11 and 10. Mm. So 21 damage. Well, I'm into my HP. Uh These little troopers in the back are being very disruptive. Pawns, it is your turn though. Am I out of range of the uh, opportunity attack here? Oh, absolutely not. Oh, all right. <laughs> he probably can reach almost the entire map. He's so can huge. Can barely scoot Basically. back again? Can, I can do that safely, right? Yes, you can do a five foot step away. <laughs> all right. And then I'm going to need to heal my, you know, wait. Wait, did no, he take his attack of opportunity against Swarkus? Uh, yes, and it hasn't come back to his turn yet, so theoretically you could run away your full speed if you wanted to. Good catch. Me? Oh, thank you. Yeah, uh, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> no way over there. No guarantee you're out of his reach yet, what? but that is much further away. <laughs> I mean, so look how big away. he is. He's how big 12 he is. by 12. Oh, God. Okay. By, I'm going to heal like, myself. Standard, standard, uh, like token sizes, I think he would have like a 12 square reach or something stupid. <laughs> it is ridiculous. Okay, uh, you're going to heal yourself. Go ahead, do what you're going to do. Uh, so I'm going to do Mystic Cure, which is a D8 plus my Wisdom modifier, and it shows that okay. there's a plus four added to it already, so I'm assuming that this number I have here is my total. So I'm going to go up 8 health. Nice. And that'll be it. I'll get me back up to full. That gets you up to full. Very good. Okay. Anything else on your turn? No, nope, that'll be it. Get away. Archduke Pathon. Archduke Pathon is going to do two attacks. One with the double arm, where a second arm is sprouting from the elbow. And one from the hand that has this blade coming out of the wrist. And it's going to be on both Swarkus and 5e. Ow. Does a 17 hit you, 5e? KAC? KAC. Yes. Swarkus Gore manages to move out of the way, but it still like slashes part of his armor. He barely mm-hmm. made it out of there. But damage for 5e, that's going to be... <laughs> I rolled literally the lowest I could. That is 16 damage. That's wow, the lowest? That is, that that is, is the lowest he goes. my remaining stamina. Oh my god. Holy balls, dude. Oh my god. Yeah, that's why I didn't want to stay with any HP taken off. I could have gotten one shot. That's so okay, sweet. Swarkus Gore's turn. He is within the aura, so he takes some damage. Again, he does not care. He's going full rampage right now. And Swarkus is going to use the hammer. And let's see, that that is not a good roll. However, once again, I think this is literally the same roll as last time. He just barely manages it. That's another 24 damage to this thing. Good, we need it. 
Yeah, Swark as Gore is a monster. Yeah, man, I'm loving having him on our side this season. As long as he doesn't turn turn on us at the end here. Round five. In our 5e, you're up. Since the uh, the two guys in the back have decided to <laughs> continue helping, uh, we just we can't have that. And that's a threat that 5e <laughs> knows he can deal with rather handily. So he's going to drop that sense motor for a trick attack on those two mooks. Those yokels. Yeah, and that's still not good enough to get trick attack damage. Oh, no. Very, very sad. That was a very low roll. So I'll just shoot from where I am. All Stitch right. that pistol on them. And that's a 22 to hit. That'll hit. Give me some damage. And it'll take four piercing. Okay. Scriff. Scriff types furiously on his data pad. <laughs> Hacking okay. in progress. 19. 19. Okay. Let me roll against you. Scriff, it's not the time to be playing those games. I need you to attack this thing. This isn't no game. I got an 18. Ooh. Hold on. <laughs> oh, sweet Jesus. <laughs> oh, can I say what I'm going to do this time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so Scriff, Scriff is trying to change the holographic image. So, like, I want to, like, make him look like something else, like a chicken or something. What? (laughs) Okay. So you try to change the image to that of a chicken. As you do that, you're getting some heavy resistance. But on the front of the face, you see this beak (laughs) pop out. And uh, now he's got a bite attack. (laughs) (laughs) But uh, because you succeeded against him, he will get another negative to his attack. Excellent. Again, it's it's substantial, but you're, you're whittling away at it, essentially, which is awesome. Cool. Okay, Cyland soldiers uh, did not like how you shot it. They never do. There. Yeah, they never do. So they're going to move into cover. They'll have some cover from you, but they're also going to take two attacks. Wow, these guys are stormtroopers. That's a six and an eight. All right. <laughs> so That's close. what I like to hear. Jeez. All right, Pawns, you're up. All right, yeah, I'm going to go for another mind thrust. This is not going to be with the stone, so make a will save. We'll see what happens. Okay, so you are doing a spell within range of this guy. So he is going to take an attack on you oh. to try to just absolutely ruin your day. Oh. Well, shoot. I wasn't sure I was just out of it or not. Um, hmm. You should come stand by Scriff. No. no. (laughs) Try to hide behind him. No, you should. That's any Um, better. Okay. You should. It is better. Even with the negatives that he's taking from Scriff, that is still a 23 to hit. Yeah. I mean, that definitely hits me. That's going to hit. And that is 17 damage. Oh, shoot. I needed to move first. I'm almost dead. I'm so sorry, Pawns. And I'm going to so run all one, the way away. One of the big hands just comes over and slashes at you with these claws that it has and creates this huge gash in your brain. Oh, no. Wait, am I going to have memory loss? <laughs> we will find out. Oh, jeez. <laughs> brain damage. Brain damage. Oh, brain damage. Yeah. All right, that's my turn's end then. I'm so sorry, Pawns. That's okay. All right. Archduke Hathom. 5e, Swarkus Gore, and the Silent Soldier are going to have to give me a reflex save as this chicken beak opens (laughs) (laughs) and just thousands upon thousands of shards of glass shoot in a cone in front of it. Wow. (laughs) (laughs) It was going to be so metal and so rad, but now it's a chicken face. (laughs) Don't even know. I got a a fortitude save of 14 to resist chicken. 14 is good, right? That's that's a number that's high. No. Uh, That's that's definitely a number. uh High enough debatable. Make him... Make it popsicle? I don't know. Mm, I don't know. It's up to you if you want to do that or not. I I don't think it's worth the popsicle at this point. So it fires out this breath attack. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Swarkus is the only one to save. 
So the Cylan soldier in the back, both of them actually, are absolutely ripped to shreds. Just they are gone. with glass. They're just, they're gone. Mm-hmm. Everyone else is going to take 32 damage. I am so glad that I was not in the line of fire of that. All right, that triggers my nanites. So burning a point of resolve. Oh my god. Uh, I'm okay, right? Uh, yes, you are okay. just barely okay. What? What? <laughs> it was I'm like it flew, yeah, it flew right by you. This is a breath weapon. It's a cone. Oh, those a cone. Gotcha. Yes. All right. Swarkis swings for a 26, and that'll hit for 19 more bludgeoning damage. Woo-hoo. His yes. charges on that thing are beginning to dwindle because yeah. he keeps swinging it. And that's going to bring it back around to NR 5E. All right. Um, I want to step away from this thing. Okay. Um, actually, as, as part of a trick attack, so I'll go ahead and begin with Sense Motive. It will provoke if you do that, just so you're aware. Yeah, I'm, I'm aware. Um, okay. And I'm willing to roll the dice on that. Or he's, I'm willing to let him roll the dice on that because I have <laughs> mobility, so that at least makes it harder for him to hit me. Sure. Basically, I just want to try to get out of that breath weapon cone. I don't need that to happen again. Uh, What's the (laughs) attack roll? Okay, attack roll against you, even with the negatives, is a 23 KAC. That hits. And it hits you for 17 damage. I am dead. Oh, you're down. Uh, Okay, so zero is down. There's a big difference. You have resolve points and things of that nature. Dead is very different. Yeah. 5e down on the ground healing nanites will get him next round but for now he's just laying prone gun slides across the room scriff you're up 5e uh scriff is going to i I can't do anything to heal 5e i just i mean i i could it would take too long to do an engineering check so scriff is going to do what they know Um, is going to help okay Mm-hmm. And going to hack this thing again, but okay, I have an idea. Specifically, what they're going to try to do this time, I want to kind of try to desolidify the side of his holographic body that Five E is on to hopefully reduce his reach. Ooh, interesting. So that maybe he can't do anything to Five E and allow Five E to recover, because you know, Scriff knows more or less what 5e is capable of i think scriffa knows that he has these repairing nanites that come into play so let me okay. give you a computer's check right here Please hopefully do. it's good 32 baby oh my gosh i rolled so well too I and that too. still beat it natural 18 you find out a couple things first you can tell that during this turn this last turn Pathon essentially re-enabled the countermeasure on you. So next time you go to do this, you might have to contend with that again. But you did beat him on this turn. You're going to try to make his right-hand side less capable of attacking. Yes. Interesting. Okay. You see on the right-hand side, there's this blade sticking out of it. The blade starts to deteriorate and fall away. Nice. Cool. The Kage Pensa, you can't attack me! He just looks at you and goes, Pukak! All right, Pawns, you are up, my friend. <laughs> what? <laughs> The okay. badassness of this character has been completely removed. <laughs> oh, so I am in a really precarious spot. I can't get to 5e in more than three. It would take three turns to move up to him, uh, and I would get back in range of this guy. So, Oh, is yours I'm by gonna, touch, your healing? It is. It's only yep. by touch. So oh, I'm going to no. move. By Adam, God. Yeah, it's it's over 60 feet. Um, oh, I'm gonna no, start. You could, I mean, you could double move. 
Oh, I could, you... but that would be within range, and then I'd die. So I can't do that yet. I need to heal myself up first. Oh, yeah, he's already used his attack of opportunity, so you could theoretically move. But once you get there, then you'll have problems. Yeah, if he attacks me, I'd go down. Maybe not. What are you thinking? So attacks of opportunity are this. This is a little metagamey. So you can stop me if I'm right, overstepping got? my bounds. But uh, your healing touch pawns is mm-hmm. a supernatural ability, which doesn't provoke. I, yeah, I, I think I need to heal myself so I don't insta-die if he does attack me when I go over there, though. And Fair. I wouldn't blame you for doing I, that either. That's I my do problem. not fault you for that. All right, I'm yeah. going to move closer, <laughs> does. and I'm going to get myself back up to... F- oh, man, this is getting actually kind of scary. I need to... S- I don't need to spend a resolve point yet. Yeah, not yet. I just have to use my first healing touch, and I'll use that on myself to get myself uh, back to full HP again. Okay, nice. That'll, that'll be the end of my turn. This is getting scary. 5 E's down. Pawns is pretty much one hit away from going down. I don't know where Swarkus is because I haven't real. I don't have like insight on that, and I haven't done taking the time to analyze him. I don't have medicine. I don't know how he's doing. Is he bleeding? He's a little hurt, but he's very solid. Are all of his limbs, like, angled in the right directions for a vest? <laughs> yes, yes, they are. Okay. They're currently okay. He's okay. Tough. Scriff, you keep getting in there, and you keep hacking. That's right, I do. And he's not happy about that. He better not be. I'm going to need a fortitude save from you, and it's oh, not an easy one. And it's Fucking it is course. not an making easy me one. do a fortitude save. <laughs> is that the only Ow! one you don't have anything in? <laughs> it's not his worst one, but it's I not got, great either. I got okay. so much AC, and you send me a fortitude save. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the same thing. Uh, okay. Well, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna play all my cards. Is this a <laughs> Is it a hot or cold environment? Is it a choking or thin atmosphere? Uh, or is it a sleep <laughs> effect? This is psychokinetic strangulation. So it's essentially so, yeah, it's forced put him to choke. Sleep. That sounds like choking, like it's yeah. trying to deprive me of my breath. Uh-huh. Uh, so I do have toughness, which okay. help, you know helps with uh, holding my breath and stuff like that. So that's a 17. So here's how this spell works, because that is not enough. Yeah, dang. Dang He's got a higher spell casting than I do. Dude, this is (laughs) cool. It was not bad at all, but he's not playing around. Each round that this spell is concentrated on, so it is a concentration spell, you deal 3d8 bludgeoning damage and immobilize a target. A creature mobilized this way cannot move and must hold their breath. The creature can still attack in any way, cast spells, and so on. Each round, the spell affects the target. The target can attempt another fortitude save to half the damage and avoid being immobilized. To half the damage? So you don't get out of it unless you break its concentration? Correct. Oh my gosh. Okay. We gotta hit this thing then. Scriff. That is 21 damage for this round. You know what? It's okay. It's okay. (laughs) I'm in my happy place. I'm still in my stamina. That is its turn. Swarkas Gore comes up. He sees you essentially get Darth Vadered into the air. And he's going to swing on this thing and see if he can't break you out of this. I'm looking up the rules on holding my breath. Mm -hmm. I can hold my breath for two rounds. That's it? Okay. Yep. Wow, that's that's rough. That's you not guys very are, good. are gonna have to move fast. If if I take a standard or full action, it reduces it by one round, and then I have to start taking Constitution checks. All right. So Swarkus unloads a truckload of damage. However, this creature, whatever this avatar of electricity is, is not just a standard creature. And it has an ability to actually roll to maintain its concentration on these kinds of spells. Usually it's broken by damage, but I'm going to roll here and I'm, I'm using a formula that I'm trying to be as fair as possible about. I pulled it over from uh, Pathfinder. 
and I rolled quite well on that. So it's gonna maintain the strangulation on Scriff, but depending on how you how much damage you guys do in this round, that might change. 5e, you are up. All right. So at the start of my turn, my fast healing grants me one hit point. So that means you're back in the fight, baby. And it does, theoretically, except that I just dropped all my stuff and I'm lying prone <laughs> on the ground. It's that trope of the gun falls on the ground and slides way across the room. Yeah. So I'm assuming it's a standard action to pick up um, both of my things. So I guess one, one standard action this round to pick up my gun... Um, yeah. Can you crawl to and, me at all? And actually, I'm going to stay right where I am oh, and no. hope that this thing doesn't notice me. That's fair. <laughs> You're behind the stuff, I guess, now, yeah. Yeah. The computers are absolutely trashed in this room, but there is a bit of a desk that you're behind. Oh, if you have cover, you can't provoke. Well, that's the other thing. As I was reading the rules, it doesn't look like standing up from a prone position provokes in this game. It's not called out. No, but it does require an action. Right, yeah. Got it. So you could shoot from prone, and if you have cover Ooh, from the desk you're behind... shoot around the corner. Okay. Just throwing that out there. Um, I'm not, I'm still I'm still not going to because I needed to expend an action to get my weapon back, and if I'm going Fair. to attack this thing, I want a trick attack. I want a chance at doing as much damage as possible. So okay. I'm basically like collecting my weapons and playing dead for a little bit while my nanites heal me back up. <laughs> You're just laying flat, and then one hand just slowly moves over, grabs uh -huh. the gun. <laughs> uh huh. Very nice. Yep. Okay. That is um, that is my stratagem. Yeah, you know what? Why don't you go ahead, for fun, give me a stealth roll. Okay. Um, I want to see how subtle stealth? you are about this. Uh, how subtle is 27? <laughs> That's fairly subtle. <sighs> There's a lot of distraction going on. Okay, there is. And because this is entertaining... That was a 26 to try to see what you were doing. <laughs> <laughs> Very so good. Close. Okay, you stealthily pick your gun back up. And because you're so stealthy, I'm going to say that he doesn't even know that you actually are even conscious right now. Excellent. That's the way Scriff, I like it. you're up. You are currently being strangled. You can give me a fortitude save to half it. Uh, I will give you a fortitude save. That's a 26. That'll do it. All right. Okay. And then I'm going to keep hacking it. Okay. I this will time, roll the damage of that. This time, I'm going to try and shrink the avatar and make it smaller, Ooh, a more manageable size. I okay. got... A 28 on my computer's check. I'm going to roll against that. Uh, you saved on the strangulation, so you take 7 damage instead of 14. Okay. Does it, uh, like, save me from the effect in the future? You can uh, move. No, you guys are going to have to break the concentration. But again, like, so gotcha. here's what I'm doing. I'm going to do it like cumulative damage. When it gets back to his turn, he'll try to maintain his concentration if... You guys beat whatever he rolls. You guys will break the concentration on that. Got gotcha. it. Gotcha. Okay. What was your computers? 28. I got a 23. You can't <laughs> beat Scriff at Can't stop. It won't stop. <laughs> <laughs> Keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. Computer guy. Okay. The, guy you know, in the chair. That's, that's <laughs> interesting. I like that. Okay. Wonder so box. you try to essentially restrict the control. You close the pipeline a bit, parts of it start dropping off because it can't maintain the size of it. So this thing is going to shrink down. That's yes. really cool. I like that a lot. <laughs> oh, it, it shrunk a pretty significant size. It's still like eight by eight. Yeah, but... it's big. Okay, so it was 12 by 12. It is now 10 by 10. Okay, I can respect that. I'm going to say with that range, I don't think it can hit Pawns where Pawns is right now. Thank okay. goodness. I've been trying to That's stay good. out of that range. That's good. I'll take it. Pawns, you are up. All right. Let's see. He is slightly further away at this point, though. So let yes. me go. 
I can't quite reach in our 5e still. I'll get as close as I can, and then I'm gonna hit him with another mind thrust here. I will roll a will save against that, because I will save against that. Please don't. With a 26, I will save uh, against that. Shout out to Will Save the Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> shout out. Uh, the damage was 24, so half of that will be still 12. 12 Not too bad. damage, you got it. Uh, go ahead, give me a perception roll while you're there, Pons. Okay. Uh, 30 total. Okay. With all the things that have been done to this, mainly by Scriff's darn hacking, Yes. And Swork is gorgeous smashing against this thing. Mm -hmm. It's not looking happy. It's not quite on death's door, but you can tell that like chunks of it have fallen off. Okay. It's not looking great. Excellent. Be one, one, two more rounds. Back around to its turn. Okay, it does not do any more breath weapons. Yay. However, pawns. You feel something very familiar and horribly painful as your mind is attacked. No! no! From your boombox, this horrible surge of psychic energy emanates. And basically, the practical effect is you're going to get a mind thrust right back. Oh, no. all right. It's okay. At least will saves are my best. That's fair. Go ahead and give me that will save. Nah, it still wasn't that. No, nah, it's not going to do it. 14. You take 24 damage. And I'm almost down again. <laughs> oh, no. However, because he chose not to maintain his strangulation scrip, you are now free. Right. Hallelujah. That's his turn. Swork is gore. Okay, this is the last charge he has on this weapon before he has to do something about that. Either reload or... Well, at least he made the last attack before he has to do something count. That is 24 damage. And that moves back around to NR5E, who is playing Possum. I am. I'm going to continue playing Possum. I'll make another stealth check as I retrieve my baton as well. Okay. And I fast heal one more hit point. Ooh. Good. Oh, you're at a two. Uh-huh. My stealth check's not as good this time, though. I only got a 17. So you don't know whether or not he saw you, but you did your thing. Scriff Dovetail. Scriff is going to keep hacking. That's a 26. Yay. You literally beat it by one. <laughs> ah! I think this time I want to mess with whatever ocular sensors he has. Oh, I want to no. screw up his vision of this battlefield. Yeah, so here's I'm going to have him roll a fortitude save to not be completely blinded by this. So you got in there and you start messing with his eyes. That was a really good roll for that fortitude save. So he saves on that and manages to retain vision. Damn. Okay, Pawns, you're up. Yay! All right, so I don't have a tracker for the amount of uses of... That is the Oleron's mental shell, yeah. No, you don't have a tracker. I'm keeping track. Yeah, it's like the second time or so, but I'm going to use that again. Going to oh, go for another man. mind thrust at second level. Yeah, you are. <laughs> uh, that is a 27 will save. Make him reroll it. <laughs> it's double damage. It's worth it. I, I don't know if it's going to matter. It's Your worth it. Your will save is insane. Dude, double damage if he fails. If he fails. Oh, it's what the heck? Damage. It's the boss battle. Go for it. Yeah, yes. I'll use the yeah. popsicle. Okay. Now yes. Got it. yes! I will re-roll this will save, and that is substantially worse. Oh, wow. That's good. <laughs> that is a grand total of a 14 to save. All right. Cake some pies. Cake some pies. I will roll twice. <laughs> that is going to be 36 damage. Okay. Wow. Oh that's God. a lot of damage. Whoa. It's a lot of damage. That's a lot of damage. Lot of damage. <laughs> okay, you drop a mental bomb on this guy, and you see another large crack go across the shell. Go ahead and give me a mysticism check. 19 for mysticism. Okay, you can tell on this shell, with as big a cracks as are on there, you've maybe got a use or two left of this thing. Oh. All right, that is not Yikes. that many. I'll save it for right now. 
All right, chunks of this being are just falling to the ground. You see cables hitting other computers and smashing. If you ever watch Akira, there's some scenes that look like this. Yeah. Tomato! <laughs> As a standard with breath weapons, I've been rolling to get them back. Uh huh. And oh, guess no. what's happening this round? Is five E within oh, range no. of now? I'm at eight HP. Yeah, he's yeah, smaller. So he is smaller because this is a weird situation. Because it probably matters most to you, five E. Give me a heads or tails. Oh, heads. You did guess correctly. It will reduce enough that pawns doesn't get hit. Oh, you, okay. however, God. are still, still in caught in the blast. Okay, go for it. Let's oh. see what happens. When what do I what save if any do I get to make against this? this? Yes, you do get to do a save on this. It is reflex. That's a 21, baby. And let me roll for Swarkus. Fortunately, pawns, you do not have to roll. If you don't go down, Richard, I'd be very surprised. <laughs> With a 21, uh-huh. 5e manages to roll under the table. And because nice. you have that infuriating ability Evasion. as an operative, you oh. completely avoid the damage. Evasion, Sick. baby. That's really good. Swarkus, however, takes full damage straight to the face. Oh, he that can't be doing good. Yeah, yeah. He's not mm. great. No. Okay, we he's need to finish right this. Up there and taking aura damage the whole time, so he's he's looking kind of the worst for wear right now. His hammer is out, so he's going to just come at this thing with his claws. They extend out, and he's just going to slash into this <laughs> yeah, as hard as possible. Extendo claws. <laughs> yeah, he's got extendo claws. <laughs> okay, uh, that is that is minimum damage. This is so much less damage. All right, this thing is looking horrible. Okay, he has not attacked me yet. It hopefully hasn't noticed that I've been recollecting all of my weapons, but this is a critical moment. 5e has got to do something to protect his comrades here. 5e is going to do the the, 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 pro the protective bodyguard robot thing, and he is going to try to snap a trick attack at that that big holographic bastard from cover. Okay. My sense motive rolls a 21, which I know is not good enough to trick attack. I'm sorry. I will take my my measly skip shot, which is a 14. <laughs> Does he hit? Um, <laughs> oh, man. Actually. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> a 14 hits. Really? Yes. Six piercing damage. Another giant chunk of this thing falls off. The entire right arm falls off. This thing is at the very verge of collapse. And Scriff, you are up. Scriff, in a moment of frustration at not having hacked this thing, is going to Fonzie maneuver and just bash it on the head. I guess I'll full attack. Okay, give me a full attack. 17 against KAC for the first okay. one, and 10 for the second. Okay, first one hits, second one does not. Give me damage. 15 piercing damage. I'm going to tell you right now, it has oh, a single digit of health points left. Oh. Tons, it's up <laughs> to right. you. And I pull out my gun. <laughs> And I'm going to hit that thing with a membrane holdout pistol, which is going to be a flame attack. Yes. For a 21 to hit. Yes. That hits. Roll damage. Please roll five, five damage. And that is enough. Yes. <laughs> the Archduke pulls back as best he can through the screen. The body deteriorates as it goes. The other arm falls and shatters to the ground. And as it pulls back through in some of the flickering of this terminal, you can see this panting Pathon, horribly lacerated, bleeding purple, staring at you before the screen erupts into this explosion of glass that flies all over the place. So on cool. the radio, even through the heavy static, you hear Uzi's voice. We found detention center, find us. So it seems that the other group found the detention center. Can I hack into any of the computers that are in this room and get a schematic? Yeah, go ahead and give me computers roll. 
This is only a 17. Can I wait here? Yeah, I'd say you can assist. Yeah, make that a 19. Okay. With a 19, you find the one computer that's still working in this entire room. <laughs> the one computer we didn't destroy. I, like, steal some guy's security key and plug it in. Yeah, you can pull off one of the guys who's less splattered than the others. You pull off a key and log in. And you can pull off a schematics. The detention center is not that far away. Shut off all trash compactors on the detention cell. <laughs> Shut off all the trash compactors on the detention level. Shut off all the trash compactors on the detention level. With the map, it does not take you guys long to move back through the tunnels. The doors are unlocked. You manage to pull them open super easy. And you head down a few corridors, take a left, take a right. And then you get into this room, a doorway open. And like the guards have completely vanished. They're not trying to stop you anymore. There's no drones here. You find a room that's a long tunnel with 12 cells in it, most of which are empty, save the bones of several unfortunate creatures that were left there to rot. And there's a large terminal that seems to control the cells and the other side of the crew trying to figure out exactly what to do with it, but they're not exactly computer whizzes. I got it. Scriff, if you want to jump in there, give me a computer's roll. 27. Okay, with a 27, you see that this computer had a countermeasure as well, but you do manage to bypass it, but only just. There is a list of inmates and you can tell from the computer that these cells can be shifted between levels. So if you have prisoners on one level, you can, like an elevator, move them down to other Does levels. Does one of them say Glunge's mate? So here's what the list says. First off, there's like a lot on here, but the main ones that stick out to you are one troll, huh. six inmates that are marked Gurgatal, and one cell that appears to have two occupants, but is also marked Gurgatal. It's trying to take notes on this and somehow I mistyped occupants as octopants. <laughs> <laughs> if you can access the mechanical mainframe, we might be able to simply rotate the cells and free each of them in turn. Okay, I think I can do that. Hold on. Your fingers fly over the computer and you start moving different cells and you hear different thuds as they clank into place. I'm just going to free them all. It's easier that way. Actually, that's not a bad idea. I actually don't mind that either. Okay, so you move the Gurgatals and the one troll into this level, and you can just open all the cells on this level. You don't have access to the other cells on the rest of the ship. But you, you see all of these bars slide out of the way. People, with some confusion, begin to emerge from these cells. One is a large troll. When Gludge sees Slog, they run over and do this big hug, and it's just like this thunder clap when they slam together. Ah, uh, I believe my circuits are experiencing some sort of tingling sensation. I believe you call it wistfulness. <laughs> Swarkus is going around checking on the different people and they're so excited to see that their boss actually came for them after they essentially thought that they were just done. The one person that you do recognize as they walk out of the cell, they're holding a small child, a small boy, and he looks over at you guys and you recognize Herder Dins, the man that you kidnapped and interrogated oh, when you were first gosh. going to the Gurgatal. The one that I threw into the truck? The one you threw into the truck and then gave a crystal crunchy nice. to. <laughs> Walks out holding his son. Yes! Our bad. <laughs> we're the heroes. <laughs> Kinda. <laughs> he gets this like kind of smile on his face, but he looks like he's been beaten within an inch of his life. And he, he looks over at Swarkus and is like, boss, you, you came for us. Swarkus looks over, gives a nod, and then kind of to everybody goes, everybody follow me, as he roars and starts running out of the room to try to get you guys back to the ship. Yes. And so with Swarkus bulldozing down the hallway, anyone who is unfortunate enough to walk out just gets thrown back into the room <laughs> they're in. 
and just keeps moving. And eventually he gets to the door where you guys had come through. The ship is on the other side. He doesn't even stop to see if it opens. He just grabs it and wrenches it open like you guys did to that one door. Out ahead is your ship, missing the front wheel and all. And he gestures for everybody to run as bullets and lasers start firing from the other parts of this hangar. Are we going to be able to get everyone on the ship? You guys all shove into the airlock somehow. Some of you have to go in through the cargo entrance. And as 5e, you get back to the controls. Bullets ricocheting off the side of this thing. Go ahead and give me a piloting check as you get out of here. Initiating evasive maneuvers. Everyone should strap in or hold on to something. We may not have enough straps. Piloting check is a 25. So it's not an easy job, but you pull forward with the engine. You smash into another ship and break it as you spin around and slide along the runway out of the ship. Sparks are flying off in all directions, and then you manage to catch some wind and pull off just as you see off in the horizon over the clouds the exploder seems to be holding their own they're seriously yes. outclassed like the sheaths of armor have fallen away they probably got hit by some of these main cannons but they're yeah. still going right. smoke's pouring off your scanners are still pretty scrambled from the satellite dish but that means that the program is still running and you can make the assumption that Isben Espa is going to need a pickup real soon. Oh, yeah. So you fly away, and there's still just all of this cannon fire and lasers happening above you as you swing down, heading back towards the goblin camp. As you get there, you can see from the air the satellite dish and swing down. There's just enough room for you to be able to pull over and land next to this dish without a front wheel, so it's like tank. Stuck in the sand a little bit. Uh-huh. Nose first. Is there are there any personnel left here other than Isbin? Because all the goblins are on the, the explosion. Yeah, right? is the only one here. Alright, then I would probably radio to Is to Isbin Espa and, and, and just say, Captain Espa, we've returned. We have prisoners. Make preparations for a med bay. If possible. Go ahead, give me a perception roll. Anyone who happens to be near Windows. Yeah, I don't remember if the comms are still working, so Ponza's first thought would have been to, yeah, go ahead and just get out and try to contact her personally. Okay. Uh, you wanted perception? I got a 14 through the main window. 18. Because of all the sand that's essentially pouring in, it's hard to see out of the ship, 5e. But Pons, you go out of the airlock and move towards Ismin to try to get communications because the radio isn't quite working. And as you move closer to this satellite room, you see two figures. One is standing above another, and they appear to be holding a severed arm. No! We just attacked! <laughs> we just put that back. And because you have mental senses, you detect, as they look back and lock eyes with you, a severely injured and pissed off is Espa. You can oh, no. see this figure is covered in blood as she turns to see you. On the ground is the unit that had tried to take control of NR5E, and she has ripped her arm back off. It's done. Just, she points to the room. This hit confirm. And somebody dragged this SRO onto the ship. I'm claiming my kill. Oh, sh**. Hans will come over there and be like, uh, I think it's I think it's that button. You go over to the console and there's simply one prompt on it that says unlock question mark with yes and no as the response. Choices. Ah, yes. Yes. Beep. OK, you mash down on the yes button and a 30 second timer pops up onto the screen. Huh. Over the scratchy comms just outside the room. So you're probably hearing it in person. You hear. I don't know what is going to happen to this system when it opens suddenly from the safe little pocket into the true drift, but let's not be here to find out. So you can hear her dragging this SRO unit over to the airlock. 
Yeah, I'll go ahead and help. It takes a little bit, but you guys manage to get the SRO unit into the airlock. And as that happens, 5e, you just blast off out of this because you at least heard some of that over the radio. Yep. Go ahead and give me one more piloting check. And I will say, if it's safe to do so after I get us in the right direction, I'm going to try to put this on autopilot because I want to go check that unit and make sure that it is damn well good and shut down okay. and not going to somehow reactivate. If necessary, I will dismantle it using my own O's, man. <laughs> yes. Piloting 14. Not great. Good enough to get us Yeah, it, TFO. it gets you into the air, but that's about it. There will possibly be time to go check out that unit. I think Isben Espa has got it covered at the moment. The stick is shaking as you try to pull up out of this place. And from the radio, through the static, you hear from Festering Boil. The ship can't take one more hit in cannons in this. So as you start climbing into the atmosphere, the Explodinator attempts to do the same thing. Everyone holds their breath as the ship rockets towards orbit. Suddenly, on the second hand, alarms start blaring as an abrupt and intense gravity field rakes the hull and tries to drag it back down to the planet. The second hand begins to struggle and shakes and shudders, and you can hear in the back the whine of the drift drive, which comes to life. Sensors pick up from the god site's main cannon that it is fully charged and there is the sound of a target lock on the second hand not on the explodinator then as if a rubber band snaps the gravity tears away and both the explodinator and second hand careen in space as the silence cannon fires what do you do three two evasive maneuvers now i engage Engines. They're damaged. Oh, yeah, baby. That is a th natural 20 for a 32 piloting check. Okay, that's To get good. clear of those lasers and get us the F yeah. out of here. And Adam, just recalling, our engines were damaged. I don't know how long it's been, but I did patch them. You did patch them. It has okay. been less than an hour. So it is right. holding together. So script. There. You're watching this thing as it's just <laughs> shaking around in the back of the ship. 5e. As this cannon fires, you loop up and do a barrel roll as it shoots right next to you as both the Explodinator and the second hand turn on the drift drives and scream out into the drift. And that is where we will end this season. Oh! Oh man, it feels so good to finally be done with this planet and moving on to bigger and better things in season three. I hope you're as excited as I am. We're going to be taking a little bit of a hiatus before we get into season three, but don't worry. I'm going to be filling in for Adam in the captain's chair next time because we're going to do a little short session with some friends of ours. We'll save the podcast and Hex Grid Heroes are going to be guest starring here on a collaborative project. That's coming next time. So we'll see you all then. When life drains you down, charge up on the Emergency Power Network. Theme song triangles by Diamond Ace. Find them at bandcamp.com. Music provided by Nicholas Judy of Dark Fantasy Studio at darkfantasystudio.com and Tabletop Audio. Find them at tabletopaudio.com as well as Carl Casey of White Bat Audio. Find them at whitebataudio.com. Font Azonix by Mixo. Find them on Twitter at MixoFX. The Starfinder role-playing game, including its official lore and images, are the intellectual property of Paizo Incorporated, all rights reserved. Narrated by Danny Lee Collins.